Does anybody have patience nowadays? So many people think, I'm going to come to God, pray once a day, go to church on Sundays, and then God's going to bless me. Life's going to be amazing. I don't have to do anything else. Did you know how much people suffered from following Jesus back in the day? All of his disciples, but one, were killed, beheaded, crucified upside down, burned, stabbed, you name it. That happened to them. You will suffer following Jesus. You will lose friends. You may lose family. You will be hated on. You will be looked at funny. But you will also get the peace. You will also get blessings in other ways as well. Because we've been taught, oh, you'll get blessed by a new job. You'll get blessed by this, by that. And it's all physical, bro. God does bless us physically. But a lot of us tend to overlook the spiritual blessings, the mental peace, the love of God, the deliverance. No more addictions. We tend to overlook all that. And we tend to focus on this world, which is the devil system. The devil operates this world. God allows the devil to operate this world because we're in a fallen world. Okay? One day, God will bring it back to how it used to be. And cast out Satan and cast out any of Satan's children. Any of the ch people that choose not to go with God. So look, it will happen in God's timing. But the question is, what are you doing to make it happen? Are you picking up your cross and deny yourself? Are you praying to God multiple times a day? Are you witnessing to people? Are you preaching the gospel to everybody? Are you following the commandments? What are you doing? Because a lot of us aren't doing anything or we're not doing enough. We think we're doing enough, but we're actually not. And God is convicting us on that, man. So look, we got Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Then we have Ecclesiastes 3, 1. There is a time for everything and a season for everything under the sun. So a season of peace, a season of love, a season of sadness, a season of prospering, a season of maybe not prospering, you know, a season for everything. Now we have Psalm 27, 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Galatians 6, 9. I like this one. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Psalm 37, 7. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. This is something too, man. A lot of us like to compare what everybody else has going on. The wicked people. Oh, look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Stop doing that, bro. Focus on yourself. Stay tunnel vision on you. How am I going to advance the kingdom of God? How am I going to win souls? Because 85, minute, 85 people die a minute without Jesus. That's 85 people going to hell. Does that not, does not, that not upset you, bro? Like, I'm weeping now, man. I'll be praying to God. I'm weeping because of how many people are lost. How many people will not make it to heaven? I'll be weeping, bro. Like, I'll be talking to God one-on-one, -on -one, crying my eyes out because I feel bad. That's what happens when we come to God. Our mind becomes renewed. Like, it's crazy who I am today, man. It's crazy how in such a short time, God has changed who I am. God has refined me. God has taken away bad things from me. God has healed me from addictions. God has healed me from depression, anxiety, all that. Let me... Lamentations uh, 3.25, the Lord is good to those who hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. Romans 8.28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So many of us claim that, that we trust God, we love God, we trust God, you know, read the little devotionals, pick the little verses out that we like. But then tribulation comes, but then we haven't gotten blessed in the time frame we expected to be blessed in, or think we just haven't been blessed. We haven't gotten the thing that we wanted to get. Maybe it's not God's will. Have you ever asked God that? Have you ever prayed to God, God, is this even in your will? Do you want me to be doing something else? Or maybe, it, maybe it's anxiety, depression, uh, some kind of healing you want God to do. And it's like been eight months. God, I've been praying to you. God, I'm, Maybe God is saying, look, I know you've been doing this, but I'm going to keep testing you. I actually want you to get closer to me. You know, you're not actually praying enough. You're not actually being intimate enough. You're not doing enough. Because a lot of us aren't, bro. A lot of us, look, a lot of us just go to church on Sundays, you know, maybe to read 20 minutes of the Bible a day, watch some videos, and that's it. Maybe pray once, twice a day. That's it. But you're not even out preaching the gospel. You're not out witnessing. You go to a gym 
four or five, six days a week. You can witness to a person a day. You go in the, go in the bathroom, hey, how's it going, man? What's the meaning of life? Start out the conversation. Okay? You go to a machine, hey, man, how many minutes do you have left? By the way, what do you think the meaning of life is? Bro, people are friendly. Most people are friendly. You don't, I've witnessed to probably like 40, 50 people in my gym now. People, like, people are friendly. Most people are friendly. And if, if they give you an attitude, so what? You'll be hated for his name's sake. <laughs> that's what the that's what it says, man. That's what the Bible says. They hated Jesus, they'll hate you too. The servant is not better than the master. Expect to have some persecution. Expect some demons to be rattled. It's happened to me. I've been threatened. I've all, I've been lunged at by by a homeless man. I've had demons manifest on me. Real stuff, bro. Real stuff. I've had that happen to me. <clears throat> is it disturbing? Eh, you get used to it, but like, we got to get out of the field, man. It's good. You have salvation. This is how I was. Oh, I got salvation. I'm at my house every single day, reading my Bible, reading my biblical books, not playing with myself anymore, praying to God, going to church, yada, yada, yada. Amazing. I'm saved. But I interact with a lot of people on a day-to-day -day basis that are possibly and probably not saved. Who is reaching that? Because these people will never go to church on their own hand. So it's up to people like us that believe in God, have a relationship with God to get the gospel preached to them. Because in their own time, they will not go on YouTube and watch a biblical video. They will not sit down on the couch at home and read a Bible. They probably don't own a Bible. And they will not go to church on Sunday because they're probably hung over from Saturday night going to the club and bar. So, people like us, out in everyday life, have to talk to these people. Stop making excuses. Ask God to give you the boldness. Ask God to give you the wisdom. Study to show yourself a proof. Get in the Bible more. Watch some more witnessing videos. Ray Comfort, Richard Lorenzo, a lot of people you can watch that have good techniques on how to witness to people. It's easy. Get confident by the fifth, five, five to ten witnessing interactions. You'll be good to go. It will feel like normal. It will be easy. But yes, it will happen in God's time. I hate, I hate, I hate when all these people want to put out a false message. They don't want to talk about the persecution. They don't want to talk about the tribulation, the challenges. They just want to skip to the blessing. But they don't talk about how it often takes time. How it often takes struggling how it often takes suffering to get to that blessing they don't want to tell you that though they just want to talk about blessing 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 it's hard bro the days get long the days get lonely but you have god but that's just when you need to get with god even more pray to god even more read the bible even more study like the word of god even more i mean you can digest so much from one sentence in the bible from one chapter in the bible from one book in the Bible, you'll always learn more. I can read the Bible 10 times front to back, and I will always find something new. I've read the Bible front to back twice. I'm on my third time now. I'm two and a half times done with it. I've read many books in the Bible more than two times. I read Proverbs five times. Plus, yeah, five times. I've read Psalms three times, and I'm still getting wisdom out of it. It never gets old. See, that's the thing, man. A lot of people like to say, oh, you know, they always preach on conviction. They always preach on sin. To me, that doesn't get old because I know I need to be reminded of that every single week. Because my mind has to stay tunnel visioned on denying myself daily and living like Christ. Which was persecution, denying himself, suffering, you know, witnessing to people. But nobody wants to talk about that nowadays. Like I need, to, I need a weekly reminder because so much happens in one week. So much can happen to distract you and cause you to, to backslide. So it's important, man, to understand that the Bible is the word of God. God does not lie. God is not Allah. Allah is the best of deceivers, as the Quran says. So the God, the most high God, man, doesn't lie. What's in the Bible is true. He will bless you in due season. Keep seeking Him. Stay obedient. Stay righteous to the best of your ability. Got a sin? Okay. 
What are you going to do about it? Pray to God. Deny yourself. Go on a fast. Look, I just got off of a two-day fast. And I was dealing with a lot of anxiety. Usually don't have anxiety. Been getting attacked a lot, though. <clears throat> Anyhow. <sighs> dealing with a lot of anxiety, so I go on a two-day fast. No food, liquid only. Well, no protein shakes as well. Just liquid, you know, um, electrolyte mix, water, tea. And all you think about is food, man. You have... The flesh is starved. You don't think about women. You don't think about jacking off. You don't think about anything but food. And that can help you break an addiction. That will help you get closer to God. Because we're not meant to live off of food alone. We're meant to live off of the food of the Bible. You know, the living word of God. So, it's important, man, to be fasted up. If you have God, God was like, look, I didn't even expect to go on that fast. God, I ate lunch three hours later. Go on a fast. I'm like, okay. Went on that fast. And it was pretty easy, man. It was, for the most part, easy. I, about on the second day, a few hours before I was about to eat to break the fast because time was up, I, I was feeling weak. You know, I was feeling weak. I was excited and my mind was just like, whew, oh my gosh, I, I can't stay focused. So, anyhow, man, the blessing will come. It will happen in God's timing. Trust God. Nothing is too difficult for God. If God can speak this planet the oceans, the animals into existence, and God can form us. God can breathe life into us. God can make each and one of us unique out of billions of people. I think God can can, can give you a blessing. I think God knows when and how to make this thing happen. Like, comment what you want to see next. I'll see you next time.